All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and today what we're going to do is work with the horizon, the heat haze that you get in the outback of Australia when you've got that shimmering heat and that beautiful haze. This will be today's subject matter. All right, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and again, outback New South Wales, right up the top of New South Wales. Now I've got the jump ups in the distance, it's got high noon, intense midday light. One of my favourite things, but this time I'm working with a really big canvas. Alright, well, not canvas, it's uh, Belgian linen. Clear primed, so it looks like it's just raw, but it's actually got a clear sealer on it. Three coats. And, as usual, tons of uh, paint and big palette knives. Alright, so, what I've done is I've taped the edges, because I like to do that. I've put a bit of a horizon line here with some tape which I'll peel off very soon. I just wanted to get the horizon straight because because the horizons are very level in Outback Australia. If you get it slightly off like this, the whole painting will be kaput later on. So it's best to get it straight right from game on. All right, now what I'm gonna do is block that sky in first. I just want to get the big impression happening. So let's go for some white, cobalt blue, a little bit of magenta and burnt sienna to knock it back, knock the intensity as it's down near the horizon. It's the middle of winter, but it's actually quite warm here today. It's amazing. It's amazing how warm it gets up the top here in uh, winter time. Okay, now maybe just a bit more of a red dominance in that, in the form of magenta. What a brew, eh? Look at that. What a brew. Okay, let's see what we've got. There's a bit more of a yellow in it, I can see. So we're going to go for a bit of yellow ochre. Just make it kind of like a warm yellow grey. Even though it's got blue about it, there's a kind of also a keyed down greyness about it down the horizon. And then I'll intensify as I go up. Hang on, I'll just get another clamp. Mix up your brush marks later, or your palette knife marks. But just initially, very quick to put in like so. It goes on beautifully. Lost a bit down there, we won't worry about that. Okay. in the painting where the brace is so if, when I get to where the brace is I've got to lighten up just a little bit as I go over it. Just something I've got to keep in mind as I go. What a big beautiful sky. 
bit more cobalt blue in that mix. I'll just see what I've got in a minute. I'll just get it mixed up a bit more. A little bit more white, not too much. Yeah. Slightly less yellow ochre, a bit more intense colour now. near the tape I always pull away from it because if I push towards it I'm liable to force paint under the tape. So I always kind of pull down away from the tape like so. That's a very straight horizon at the moment. Okay. Dark kind of rich colour. What do we got? Orange. Brown. Magenta. White. There's a bit of blue left on there. That way, mate, that'll just keep down a bit. And it needs to be keyed down a little bit, so that's fine. We can add the brighter colours later if we feel like it. Just have a look what I've got here. I 
Now, I'm kind of... I'm kind of lightly touching, I'm not touching too heavy. There. Just a bit of blue on the corner here, I don't want that to get mixed up in the work, so I'll get that off. So I'm just bringing it up to the line, not quite touching the line. Almost, but not quite. Immediately, you've got an outback horizon just like that. Just like that. Intensity here as it comes closer to the foreground here is a brighter colour. I'm purposely kind of half scraping like so. There's a lot of little gibber rocks that are uh, all around, they're just like little rocks, bang, 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 on top of the orange earth. So leaving the linen in some ways creates a bit of that. Now the jump ups are really small in the camera there, on the horizon, just a real fine line of them but they're kind of in a heat haze and they're shimmering and that's what I'm going after today, I want that heat haze, that shimmer. So I'll find a few other palette knives. Since you're working better, 
foliage colour, so in the magenta and green with the uh, blue that I earlier mixed up. Try and mix it so it's almost got no colour. There's a little bit of colour coming through. Quite a light tone, obviously. Very subtle the distance in tone. You get the tone right, it's all good. You get the tone right, it's actually quite easy. You get the tone wrong, it's extremely difficult. Seems to be the way the horizon is. running this edge up a little bit higher, straighter. So it kind of contrasts what's going on above it. The distance is kind of fuzzy and out of focus with the heat haze, but that middle ground, foreground just before is quite the pitch, so I'm trying to contrast the two. Okay, that's kind of cool I'm liking that. So what I'll do now Get stuck into other things like the foreground in a minute, but I just want to emulate a bit more light from the um, base of the ground out there, emulate a bit more light coming back up into the sky, almost like reflected light. Which means I need a yellow ochre and a white. Touch it burns the end so it doesn't go too green. I don't want it to go too green. First I'll start putting it in, you'll go, what are you doing? And you're right. But what I'll do is I'll mix it up a bit in a minute so it's a little bit more convincing and not so crazy different in tone. Just altering it a tad here. What do we got? Get it all on now. Just had to be careful near the horizon, obviously, after all that work. Now I'm just going to blend that in a bit. Now it's there, but it's still sky colour. A lot of blending going on, as you can see. Stand back. I'm going to do some more blending, but hang on, I'll have a look. Sometimes the big knife is good for this. Pull straight up like so. Very clean knife after that. those flies. The wind's dying out so those flies are coming in. Clean the knife, clean the knife.
quite a lot of blending needs to go on if you want some subtlety in that sort of distance. So that's what I'm up to. Wiping it clean as I go, like I said. Just getting rid of, getting rid of too much irregularity. I want irregularity because I want the warm and cool contrast. But you, because it's a pure blue sky, you don't want too much, otherwise it'll just look like a whole lot of clouds. of the big part of the sky going there. should have gotten that colour more correct before I put the hills in so I'm just trying to pull that down and then what I'll do is put those hills back over in a minute but the thing with oil you get to uh, work like that you can add and take away and whatever particularly with a palette knife get so muddy and mucky Saying, I keep losing that edge and I have to keep putting it back. That edge is vital to keep that edge hard to make that soft horizon. You've got the heat haze on the horizon in the pale hills in the distance, which I love. So you need this almost middle ground hill to be absolutely hard to contrast the softness. You need a contrast to get on the make it
what I'm going to do is take all the tape off and start working on a few other things. I just want to get the tape off now so I've got more of an idea what I'm actually, what I'm actually looking at. Over here in the bit. Orange and white, yellow ochre, half mix again. Very lightly touching, trying to create texture. There's, like I said, there's a lot of gibber rocks here. I'm trying to create the texture of those rocks to make the foreground. Uh, just put a bit of magenta in that to make the foreground sing against the distance. around to get an idea of what I want. Just gonna introduce a bit of magenta <coughs> sorry <coughs> a few magenta rocks in amongst it to give a variety of colour. Decisive mark going as well. I want the foreground to really come alive. Whoops, I just dropped that handle into the blue, that'll be nice. Just going to mix up a little bit of a foliage, there's a touch of greenery out there. to give some life to the painting. It's all about the distance like I said but it can be quite good to have a contrast between distance, soft out of focus, foreground form, chunky, chunky, chunky. Blew off 
one or two bugs have made their way onto the picture. I guess that's all part of it, isn't it? It's all part of it. I'll just push the little beggars in there, eh? How about that? Clean that knife. Clean that knife. Slightly smearing. Some of that earlier mix. Purposely just going to take off the edge, bit of fun. Well that is very close to it, it's just a painting about heat and midday light, heat shimmers. As you can see a lot of the work had to go into here, the foreground which is beautiful and so much fun, was only a couple of minutes work and all the other hard bits were the bits that are not as obvious anyway. You get that don't you, you get that. What I'm going to do is just get this little bug off. Now you can see I went crazy on the foreground just sticking in beautiful chunks of rock right here like this. In the distance what I've done is really gone for a heat haze effect and right at the very end there I came up with a nice technique of wobbling the uh, palette knife. You'll see that kind of zigzag zigzag zigzag. What that done seemed to give the feeling of the heat coming off the earth. So those jump ups are off in the distance glowing. All right, there you go. High noon, heat haze, no worries, thank you. All right, well there you go, the end of another video. Now if you like the video, remember to subscribe and press the like button. Until next time, we'll see you down the road.